Welcome to Wizard School and I am Walter Atkinson. In this class I'm going to discuss the 3D pipeline for movies. I have a few examples of some quick little videos that I did in learning Maya. So here they are. Yeah, man. Go ahead, you're still rolling. Go ahead. Hold on one second. The 3D pipeline for movies. Everyone watches 3D movies, but most do not know all that is behind movies. Pixar once analyzed how long it would take one person to create a 3D movie. Most people would guess two or three years. However, they estimated it would take 455 years to create a 3D movie. That is why it will take two or three years to create a 3D movie, and it can take as many as two or three thousand animators to put it together, along with producers, storyboard artists, and many more people. So I'm going to describe this process. This is an example of a 3D pipeline. The images are courtesy of 3D Animation Essentials by Andy Bean. As you can see, we have pre-production, production, and post-production. So first we will discuss pre-production. So the first thing you do when you're creating a movie or a movie short or a commercial is what is my idea? What is my inspiration? What do I want to do? So that is the first thing you want to come up with. Maybe your idea is to create a rabbit who is looking for carrots and there's a character trying to stop the hungry rabbit. Maybe your idea is to create a frog that is trying to get across a road. There is a variety of ideas that a person can have. But your next step after creating that idea is creating a storyboard. A storyboard is a series of rough sketches that you use to show the key elements of scenes. So it could be expressions from a character, it could be motions from the characters, outlines of a character, visuals of another character showing up in a scene. Uh, so, and this storyboard then is presented to the artists involved in the project. So now the pipeline travels into animatics. And this is when humans will be enact, acting out the storyboard. So they will be in front of artists and a design team and going through the motions of the storyboard and using a variety of props. And the design team will then sketch out front, back, 
desktop, side, three-quarter views, many views, uh, to create the characters or objects in preparation for the next level. And this level would be production. In the production pipeline, the characters will be laid out with front, side, top, three-quarter views. There will be research and development that happens where people will be researching uh, images and textures uh, concerning the character or object. In addition to the teams that are working on research and developing and modeling the character or object, there will be a team that works on the script and a team that works on the soundtrack, be it voices or instruments. So the 3D modelers will be receiving the drawings of the character and putting it into their viewpoint, the front, top, side, three-quarter views. At this point, they will then use the power of Maya to, uh, or whatever 3D program they choose, uh, but they'll use the, these powerful tools in order to create the character. Once the character is created, it will go into the texturing department to make the character look uh, beautiful or ugly, whatever the point is of the character. After texturing the model, the rig will be set up and then eventually the model will be, will be bound to the rig once the uh, rig has been tested. Then the animation team comes into play and they will take the model and animate it in a variety of uh, key poses called character sprites or in other words character poses. This is an example of a character rig that I have created. Notice a three-quarter view, top view, front view, and side view. I will click on my space bar to get into my three-quarter view, holding down Alt, middle mouse click to pan. I created this stove and what I did was create a spine setup uh, much like you would have in a, a spine in a human. Okay, So this stove is designed in order to squash, stretch, bend, and go into a variety of directions. This spine setup with squash, stretch, inverse kinematics, and forward kinematics is what I teach in my animation classes and these would be my beginning classes and that is rigging a spine. These yellow boxes are controls that are attached to the spine with what is called inverse kinematics. So that is as if you were clicking on your uh, you have a, a line attached from your shoulder to your wrist and you move your wrist around like a puppet. So you'll notice I can just click on the box and move my character around. You'll notice the blue circles. This is called forward kinematics, and these circles are additionally attached to the spine. This allows me to rotate, okay, much like uh, as if you took your elbow and rotated your forearm, okay. Forward kinematics drives the inverse kinematics which drives the bound skin. After the animation is completed, visual effects will be added to the scenes and lighting and rendering. Once that is done, the next step of the pipeline is going into post-production. In post-production, there will be a team that will composite or put together all the different pieces and parts of the movie. So you have the animation area, you, you have sound, uh, you have um, two-dimensional drawings that are brought in. So this is all done in a program such as Avid or Final Cut Pro or Premiere. Once the, it is composited and combined with all the different um, graphics and effects, then there is a team that will do the color correction for the in preparation for the final output of the movie. So I hope you enjoyed getting a look at the 3D movie pipeline and seeing a taste of Maya. Anyway, take care. Bye-bye.